Today on the table of the Ontario M9 bayonet and the Smith & Wesson SW3B bayonet. Now I'm making this video because when I was looking at bayonets, I was really not sure, you know, what, why is the Smith & Wesson bayonet so much incredibly cheaper than the Ontario M9 bayonet? And then when I bought the Ontario M9 bayonet, I'll have to roll in a picture because it's really hard to show. But this didn't come sharp at all. I mean, I could have pushed down with my hand and saw it on my hand and not cut myself. If you have a belt sander, it's not that big of an issue. You can sharpen it. I didn't have a belt sander, so I spent the better part of like two weeks working this with different whetstones to get it sharp because I like my knives sharp. Uh, the blade needs a new polish, but I'll even strap them. Like you can see your reflection in the edge. It's why I actually wear a leather belt because I can strap right off my belt. So for whatever reason, you know, if I do happen to get caught out in some sort of survival situation, I can get the edge pretty close, you know, on something hard. And then I can strap it with my belt and get it sharp enough to shave with or do actual real work with this. So looking at the blades themselves, and these both will lock on just like they're supposed to. These are both functioning bayonets. You can put these on like a Mossberg 590A1 or like a 16 inch AR-15 with a mid-length gas system or like an M16 gas setup and barrel length. But anyways, looking at the blades, the blade on the Smith & Wesson is slightly longer. They're pretty much identical in thickness. Now this, uh, the blades are also made out of 420 stainless steel, which you have to understand why they did that. Yeah, it's not that hard of a steel, like, for example, a folded steel like this, a high carbon steel, you can get a very, very sharp edge on there and it will hold that edge. But this is very susceptible to rust. If I were to touch this blade and then put it in the case for like, say, a month or so, and then I pulled it back out, there would be a rusty fingerprint there. Stainless steel doesn't really have that problem. Plus, stainless steel is a harder metal, so you can get a decent edge on it. For example, after I got this sharpened, it cleaned a few deer. At least more than three. Like, you can actually still see some deer stuck in the serrations. And then it doubled up as a can opener, which a very high-carbon high steel would not have done that. If I were to try to use this as a can opener and it had, like, I don't know, 1095 or, you know, something really high in carbon. I would have broke the blade. Basically, I had bought a can opener from Ikea. One of those, don't ever buy anything Italian made unless it's like leather or a car. First time I used a can opener, I broke. Well, my girl had a meal planned, so I just took my bayonet. I stabbed it in the can, bent it over, bent it over, got the stuff out of the can. And it did that until I bought a new can opener. <clears throat> must have been probably 10 cans it opened no damage to the blade i mean obviously it had to be resharpened after that but the point is it is strong enough you can do real work with this both bayonets are not full tang so trying to do like chopping it's probably not going to work out well the bar going through the handle is only as thick as this screw so you are likely to break it or if you do any sort of real prying you're probably going to break that off you need to be aware of that. Now the differences start coming in. Let's look at the cases first before we go back to the knife. So the first problem with the Smith & Wesson cases, it's got that little knob right there with just a screw holding it. Not a big deal if you live in average climates, but like in Wisconsin where it gets really cold, the metal loses its uh, flexibility. So if you were to grab this and rip, you would most definitely pull the screw out of there. The Ontario, it does a wrap around. Very good. And these are almost like rivets. Like they're smashed into the fiber. So it's not a problem. Now, either one, if you were to break off the snaps, the knife is still under retention. Uh, the M9, probably not as much. Maybe when it was brand new, it was equal, but I've used this a lot. <coughs> now your wire cutting side, they both do function. 
Um, this is just a pressed in piece. Like you can see it riveted right there. So it's very liable to break this off. And they also screwed up on it. The flat part is supposed to be pointed towards the blade. Like here on the M9. So it stops the blade like that. And then you get your wire cutting right through there. I have cut quite a bit of wire with this. Works great. Now these are a flathead screwdriver on both of them. Now this screwdriver is basically not usable. It's too nubby. And the whole point of having the flathead screwdriver on there is so in case this gets loose in combat or whatever, you can just snug it down real quick. Make your knife functional again. The Smith & Wesson does not have a slot for the screwdriver. So like I said, it's pointless. And if you were to use this on anything this I've used on several different things. It actually helped me take apart this shotgun because I didn't have a proper screwdriver that fit. So I used that and it worked out all right. It can double up as a lot of different things. They do attach pretty good. Another thing you need to be aware of is this is just billet. Same with this. The Ontario, these are forged parts. Why does that matter? So, all right, so with forging, you got your piece of metal. You have a die that's going to smash it. So the grain on this metal will be pushed into where the die is. So the grain will be going around like this, and then it'll flow. That's all great. On billet, say, for example, there's a new machinist, and you don't know what the hell he's doing. And we'll pretend this is your piece of billet metal. And that is hammer drawn. So all the grain will be facing this way. Say, for example, he cut this piece from the metal like this. It'd be like that. That would mean all your grain is flowing this way. So if you were to put any kind of pressure on here, you'll snap it off where the grain is. Same right there, because all your grain's going across. It's not following the shape of the metal. So that is something you need to be aware of. If, say, he cut the piece of metal and the grain's going like this, this could break in half but it's a lot less likely. So depending on who's cutting the metal that day will depend on the strength of this blade. Now the Smith & Wesson blade does have blood grooves. This is important because deer, humans, whatever, we're 80% water. So if you were to actually use this as a bayonet and you stuck it in, it forms a vacuum seal. It's very hard to recover your knife. These grooves let air in to help them pull out a little bit easier. The Ontario does not have those grooves. You know, I've never actually bayoneted anything living, so I don't know how important the grooves are. I'm assuming when you got the leverage of your gun, you should be able to pull it back out. Like I said, I've never bayoneted anything, so I don't really know. Both cases do have drain holes in the bottom. The Smith & Wesson does have a little pouch to where you can put something in there. Now, the Smith & Wesson does actually come sharp. It's not perfectly sharp. Like, I'd still strop this, but that's all I'd have to do is I'd have to strop it. I wouldn't have to completely reprofile it like the M9. The Smith & Wesson does have a pretty nice saw back. Like I said before, these aren't full tanks, so that's actually important because you shouldn't be chopping through branches. You'll break the knife. So you need the saw back to be able to cut through branches or wood or whatever you're trying to cut. This will still cut, but now like the Ontario, all your cuts are going forward. So you're going to be getting your cutting power on the forward thrust. I don't really know if that's a big deal because I've never tried to cut a tree down with a saw back knife. But on the Smith & Wesson, it's on the back thrust. I think this would be more usable. Again, I mean, you really got to get out there and cut some shit down to find out for sure. The locking clip on the Smith & Wesson does seem to be okay. It's also got your belt loop, which is oversized, so if you have a military-style belt or one of those tactical belts, it will fit through there. Same with the Ontario. Everything looks great on this. They're both assembled exactly the same. So that's good. So basically the point of this video is you do actually get what you pay for.
The handle on the Smith & Wesson is, just feels like a cheap plastic. You can see a mold line in the center. It's very possible this would split. This is a rubberized plastic. You can also see a mold line, but it's thicker. It just feels more sturdy. Which one would I buy if I had to do it all over again? Honestly, I'd go with the Ontario and I'd find a belt sander this time because that was ridiculous. I can't believe how long it took me to reprofile this blade so I could actually put an edge on it. But this does actually make a better knife and it would work as a bayonet. The Ontario, straight out of the box, this is not a knife. You cannot use this as a knife and I don't really see a point in having a knife that can't be used as a knife. You will have to reprofile this blade. And I've checked on the internet, yes, that it's not supposed to come sharp at all. So you have to take your straight angle and make a curve. That's a lot of work without a belt sander. So in the event you just want to buy one and it's going to be mainly for looks or mainly for just using it as a knife, Smith & Wesson. The backlatch too, how the Smith & Wesson's designed, it's not perfectly flat and there is quite a bit of slop. So it's more likely this is going to pop off your firearm than this. Both of them are at risk of popping off your firearm. It's just the nature of the beast with the bayonet. Because of how recoil works, it just jostles it and they are likely to pop off. This particular Smith & Wesson, I'm actually going to be giving this away on my Patreon because you Patreon supporters, thank you, I really do appreciate your support, had bought this for me. I screwed up when I purchased this though. I Purchased it through the store, not thinking, and we're an LLC, so if I were to take this out, it would count as 100% profit, so I'd have to pay an additional 30% on it. So I gotta talk to the accountant, make sure I can take this out as a giveaway and not have to pay all those taxes. If I do have to pay those taxes, I'll wind up selling this in the store, and then I'll wind up buying another one off of wherever, and then just giving that one away. So I don't know on how soon I'll be giving this away, but yes, this will be a Patreon giveaway. Oh, also where this locks on, it's very tight. It's very hard to use. It is still usable though. I just don't want to really mar up the blade by using it. But anyway, thank you for watching. Leave in the comments below if you've purchased one of these two bayonets, what you think of them. If you'd purchase them again, don't forget to subscribe.